What is up fellow hosts and humans? Welcome back to a brand new Westworld season four today, episode two, recap, review and breakdown. Things are getting further and further trippy this episode, all the more intriguing of course, with that of the man in black, or should I say the host in black's plan, or behind him, Haloris, to the point of where we're now talking in Westworld breakdowns about the secret service. And then of course, Maeve and Caleb entering a new park at the end. Things are getting very interesting guys, so I need Need to know your thoughts as always after you've heard mine let me know your theories everything you're thinking about this episode and what could be coming in next week's episode down in the comments below and if you're brand new here and you found the channel recently I do encourage you to hit that subscribe button because we're breaking this down every single week so let's start off right at the top I believe we have Clementine chilling in Mexico is it and she goes home and of course the host in black is waiting for her there as we know Dolores kind of wants Maeve and Caleb to buy the dust as with the attempts in the first episode that we saw and here well to be honest this could have been happening at any point in time from the time gap from the end of season three and now because as we learn after the man in black does his thing and she's like i'll never tell you she dies temporarily if you will because she gets repurposed to help william but meanwhile with Maeve and caleb we see them go to the senator's location in california don't forget that we saw Maeve learn about that location thanks to the good old Colonel Brigham through searching for his memories she saw him go there so they go there and it turns out that these people are um, who they appear to be they are hosts it's too late William and Haloris had already got there and this turns into a little bit of a fight kind of felt bad for Caleb I guess because you know Maeve can most certainly handle herself as she's a host but Caleb's just a dude so that must be very tough going up against the senator's wife Anastasia I believe her name was even though this fight ended we did see Maeve struggle to say freezel motor functions now obviously as we know she can use the force with her ability to you know manipulate machinery we saw that coming into the house with the cctv camera but here we heard her say that william has upgraded his engine so it's like kind of like these midichlorian force things in her head <laughs> i can't help but compare it to star wars still needed to kind of break the new code of these somewhat upgraded engine hosts if you will and it did eventually work this is where they chatted to the senator on a baseline level and he said that he's an emissary of a new world order and how many others are there like him and they said 249 as of now that is which makes perfect sense especially given whatever the heck is going on in christina's storyline what we saw with peter last episode what we saw with that cartel boss leader being a human but infiltrated by one of the flies that can now basically give humans like me and you narratives that we can't help but fulfill it seems as though they really are replacing the world and important people in certain positions one person after another person we saw that here with a bit of a flashback where Maeve wanted a bit more context so we had some more context to that conversation between William and this senator or should I say the host in black as we know that the host in black is now basically the face of William in the real world since William is just kind of stuck there in his freaking cryogenic chamber the senator was basically shutting down William saying that oh this proposal of yours is a high risk application and he's like well not if you change the guidelines but out there in the real world especially what we learned from episode one you know now workers like Caleb on that rooftop the robots aren't involved and now especially after what he mentions here my wife's sister died in the massacre the whole park thing that he manages to do at the end and that's because he's got someone else on his side that we're about to get to isn't exactly uh, things that people want to see especially people like senators and people way on up and that's where we basically saw Haloris come in and they got replaced with host versions of themselves Themselves. In this moment, Haloris says, I need help researching a new experiment and you are the perfect candidate. This had me very intrigued because I'm wondering if she was talking at this point the new experiment being taking over humans with the flies. Because she does say immediately after that, take her to the barn with the rest of the livestock but as we know once Caleb and Maeve went to the barn they found Anastasia there not a host by the way that this is why it's important to what Laura said with her new experiment testing that out she was given a specific narrative I guess you could say and I know you could argue they've already tested it out at this point on the cartel leader or god knows who else but it's still like a thing I assume that Haloris wants to try out with the flies so her perfect candidate being now Miss Whitney she was given the command to deliver 
deliver the message about being invited to the opening night. And now at this point in the episode, we didn't know exactly what that was, but as we know now, it's the opening night of the 1920s park. And now she's fulfilled her command. She wants to be freed. And that's when Maeve basically killed her. And she does say in this moment, she may have been human, but she wasn't like any human I've seen. Now, this is most likely Caleb and Maeve's first interaction with one of Haloris's or the Man in Black's new species, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but up until this point, Maeve hasn't encountered a human who isn't quite human. And that is because these are the new human hosts or host humans. And oh man, they weren't stopping at Senators as we've already teased because with what we're talking about next, this is where we have Clementine at Delos HQ greeting Jim Navarro from the Justice Department. The things that are cooking up with the man in black and Delos, the government aren't exactly fond of, you could say. So this only develops later with that scene of William playing golf. But as we know, this isn't the real William. This is the host in black because one thing I did love in front of the vice president this whole time is how we had William just scoring holes in one again and again. And sure, like it's impressive at first, but then even if you're the VP in that moment, you, be, you start to think, what are the chances of this man getting that ball, that golf ball in the hole every single time. I liked how the conversation went from like a subtle, friendly, flexy kind of thing into a very serious and concerning one each hole in one laid down the severity of the of the tone of the conversation more and more as it went along. The bottom line of this conversation is that they've always been willing to turn a blind eye to whatever good old Bill was, was up to in the past, but this time with what he's planning to do, he doesn't want him to do it domestically. Do it offshore, we, we don't mind, we, we, as I said, we'll turn a blind eye, but not domestically. But William, in return, is just like, it's already done. Money's been spent, I just gotta flip the switch, and I like how later on he literally does just flip a switch to make it all light up in the new park. He says that he's taking his business back to its roots, doing what he's always done. I feel like that gives us a clue with what really the purpose of the park is at the end. Because if you think about it, they can't access the data in Hoover Dam. But one thing they can do with this new park, especially with the teaser from Sophia later on, greeting and getting them ready, Caleb and Maeve that is, to go into the new park. She says, waivers of liability and consent to use their personal data. So I'm assuming that they're using this new park to get extra data from people to, again, help facilitate Haloris' new plan for the next stage of evolution because, you know, that's one of the lines or something like that from the trailers. But more discussion on that park in a little bit, of course. Turns out that the Secret Service have just been taken out by Clementine and we have William, you know, basically take out the VP of whom gets replaced, as we know. Later on at the park reveal, William says, you know, we have the support of the administration and he's just standing there like, yes. So he is, yeah. He's, he's been replaced. That's just insane. The vice president is is now under Haloris' freaking control. Not to mention as well, we revisit the guy later who initially came to Delos HQ and then obviously got the VP involved. He goes on to say how it's a national security threat, gets back in his car, and it turns out that Haloris is there with Clementine. They basically restrain him. This is where we hear Navarro say that he was right, but I don't think we've ever heard what his theory of what this national security threat was about. But Haloris replies to him saying, I was right by saying, not really, it wouldn't be practical for us to replace all of you at one time, what kind of existence would that be for us? She wants her people to grow, to flourish, to find their own identity, but she has plans for his kind. And so a fly lands on his face and he starts getting taken over as well, because obviously it would be only handy to have more and more people in the government under their control. So with Christina this episode, we have more or less the events of last episode living rent free in her head. We have her roommate showing her this obituary or and some just some details on his death. And the more and more she was reading it, she was starting to think, well, well, crap, like maybe I did write a story to that of what Peter's is like, and maybe all the things he was saying to me last episode were true. And more and more weird things obviously happening in Christina's 
world that she's in. I was thinking last episode, like theory-wise, and, and again, feel free to chuck yours down in the comments below that maybe her stories are, you know, because she's writing freaking backstories for NPCs in video games, maybe they are being used for people out there. But the last thing I expected is that Peter's story here, as we find out with her wandering around this episode, was, was for a person who seemed to have died quite a long time ago. But anyway, as Christina is on her way to work, she notices the homeless man talking about the sound. Do you hear it? The song with no sound. It's killing them. The noise. The tower. It's coming from the tower, and she indulges this man by saying, what tower? Because she's starting to get freaked out by this, because Peter was also mentioning the tower. He says, no one can hear his music but me and the birds. And that's when she arrives to work and there's literally birds dead on the floor and nobody seems to be noticing it like as if it's kind of like a fly to hosts in the earlier seasons of Westworld with how hosts just wouldn't notice because they're not human so thus they wouldn't splat. It, it, it almost reminds me of that with if there were dead birds on the floor everywhere you start to think as a human okay this ain't right but it seems that Christina is the only person kind of noticing that. And I have to admit this whole thing like what, really? is going on with Christina's storyline here is starting to get a bit confusing. I mean, obviously, but last episode I was saying, okay, what if she's in this park that Holoris is building? And I'm not fully giving up on that because now the fact that they've introduced a new park that the man in black at the end of the episode has done to likely collect data or whatever, that doesn't mean that there isn't another park as we were talking in episode one's review with regards to, you know, how just like almost at Delos HQ in season one, you see the map of Westworld kind of displayed in a hologram in the trailers for this season. We see Holoris show the man in black a similar room of the exact same map of the city that Christina lives in. So I do still believe that Holoris it has made some kind of city in the real world that she is replacing like real humans with akin to that of like the cartel leader like Anastasia and the senator but where is it exactly located because it's like a futuristic -y kind of New York is it like a futuristic -y kind of world is it meant to be a place that she's carving out for the future of her kind it it's getting weird it it <laughs> I don't really know but either way Getting back on point, we have Christina not go to work, and instead she is heading towards the Hope Center for mental health, because it mentioned that in Peter's notes. She accesses her old pitch narrative archive, and there it is, the exact same description for Peter's life. Now, I don't want to entertain this for too long, but does anyone else think that with her boss ringing and locating. I mean, I know he said that if you access it, the archives or whatever, it just pings your GPS or coordinates to where you are. But does anyone think that he might be paying a bit too much attention to her by saying, you know, just making sure you don't require any further assistance. And then with her roommate Maya basically insisting, oh no, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you or whatever. Just come back home and I'll be there waiting for you. It just makes me feel like there is a slight supervising presence around her, whether that's her roommate, whether that's her boss. She discovers that there's a dedicated in loving memory memorial wing to Peter. It doesn't make any sense to her because it looks like this place was shut down years ago. There there's even people there looking like they were like interested in developing the property with a couple of builders. I found it interesting how she says, please just leave. And then he did start walking along. I'm not going to read too deep into that, but it kind of did feel like a, hey, did you just kind of like control him to leave? But again, I really don't want to get off the beaten path of speculation there. I'm sure they did just coincidentally leave. And then she goes around and finds a certain room after the phone call ends with Maya asking her to return home. And she's sure it is just a coincidence and stuff. There's a freaking room full of crayon drawings of the tower. Again, this kind of creeps her out and, and it kind of cuts here for her story. But clearly this tower is going to haunt her so much up until the point of where she's going to go within the tower and she's going to see the map. But now with Maeve and Caleb wanted to keep the storylines cohesive. So that's why we're just getting to this part where they arrive at the opera house for their invite. Don't forget that Anastasia stayed gutting the horses for that invite because it was a part of her fly jacked brain, if you will. And the only thing that I have with this is that if they were invited, they're clearly like being invited by Holoris slash the host in black to go on this train into the new park. I mean, clearly it's all a part of the plan since, you know, they left that message in Anastasia behind to give to Maeve and Caleb. I'm assuming, right? 
that like if they really wanted them like the man in black was killing clementine at the beginning they put hits out on them in episode one well if you're inviting them to this place why don't you just get like 249 of your hosts to circle around the area and take them here and there because well they turned up to your invite and i don't think that's being nitpicky like from what i understand holoris and the man in black want caleb and Maeve dead, ideally. But instead they leave an invite to put them onto the train to go into their new park. And if you know that they're gonna turn up at that place, well, you could have them within your grasp there and then. But inst I don't really know. Maybe it's just meant to be something that we're just getting, you know, distracted with as the episode unfolds. But it was something that was bugging me. It's just like, well, do you want them dead or do you just want them to like go into your new park or not? But one thing I was happy with, because in one of my critical points at the end of last episode, I said that, Caleb should definitely get his family out of there. It didn't make any sense to me from a writing perspective why he would leave his family there, given the fact that if William really wanted Maeve and Caleb dead, as he simply did, he sent assassins to kill Caleb at the end of last episode. Well, surely the second plan would be hold the family hostage, bring Caleb back because he wouldn't let his family die, and then you deliver yourself, right? So I didn't really get why he wasn't moving his family when he left with Maeve, but in this moment, he did contact Carver, one of his guys, and says that he wants his wife out of the city since things have really ramped up to be quite a bit serious. But still, I kind of argue it was kind of serious enough when they literally sent a host to your house. Anyway, though, what I loved most about this is all of the parallels to that of season one, when we had good old William going to the park for the first time. Unknowingly knowing once you open that door, it would open into this train into the new park. And the exact same thing happened to Maeve and Caleb, but I'm getting too far ahead of myself. So they go to the bar and again, so I said I'd talk about this a bit more and I, you know, there's only so much I can say because it's still really ambiguous, but this is where they decided to deliberately tackle in the dialogue their last meeting. And that was the flashback that we've already seen before of where we saw like Caleb seemingly dying as if like he was going to the heavens at the end of that shot that you're probably seeing on screen right now. And so Caleb said, you know, so we got to talk about it. You know, what happened at the lighthouse? And Maeve's just like, well, as I recall, darling, you know, I saved your life. And he means I meant afterward. And it's just like the writer's like rubbing it in our face in this moment because again, clearly Caleb is here. We don't know exactly what happened afterward. For crying out loud, the memory stops where it looks like he's dying. And then the writer's right in this moment. What they know we've probably been wondering about that since they cut it off. And Caleb asks, I meant afterward. And we don't really get an answer in this moment. It's just more ambiguity because we have May saying, what? We did what we always said we would. We, you know, we got on with our lives. And I'm wondering, you know, since the writer is almost teasing us here and Maeve is just kind of powering it off to just be like, you know, what, what do you mean? You know, we, we did what we always said we would. We, we just got on. Why would Caleb ask about what happened afterward? Unless this wasn't significant and it's really bugging me. I do wonder if Maeve is, it could be a reveal later on where she's like, sorry, darling, you know, I tried to keep it from you or something like she really cares about, it, but she did something. I don't know what it could have been, but she did something that it's been a little bit of a gap maybe in Caleb's mind. So again, I don't want to waste too much time here. I just want a lot of theories down in the comments as to what you think happened there. Because as I said, the writers definitely included this dialogue because they must be aware that we would be wondering, especially after episode one and episode two, what did happen afterward? Because that's exactly where I got cut off. Is it really as simple as, oh, she patched him up, he recovered, got his blood back from what he lost, and they went their separate ways. And as Maeve said, we did what we always said we would. We got on with our lives. I don't think so. Sophia introduces herself. This is a nice flashback because she was the new Clementine, if you will, that replaced Clementine uh, way back when. But now she's taken the role of, hey, do you want this hat or that hat? Now, to be fair, with my criticism earlier about, well, if William and Holoris really want Caleb and Maeve, why would they invite them to this place and not do anything about it when they could just storm it? Because they fulfilled the invitation, they turned up at the opera house. But in this moment, we had Maeve kind of put her thumb on the tablet and it seemed to kind of do a bit of hacky wacky stuff. So it seemed as though the identities of that of Mr. and Mrs. Morgan could have very well been, well, a hack. And she didn't want them to know that they were there. But again, what confuses me about this, not to get too wrapped up in it, they did get invited, quite literally Holoris and the man in black host left that command for Anastasia to invite them to the opening night. So again, I I'm gonna shut up about that now. But meanwhile, this is where we cut to Holoris talking to the man in black. Now I do wonder if this is at an earlier part in time, because don't forget we have like a seven, eight year 
gap after the end of season three. So for all we know, this could have happened after that moment where William had his throat cut and is now being kept alive in this crow kind of place because it just kind of seems weird for Holoris to only say this eight years after keeping him alive. It makes sense that this would technically be an earlier point. William's just like, well, let me guess, you're gonna repopulate the world, but that's when Holoris kind of details a bit further. It would be pointless to bring in children in a world where they'll be consumed by jackals. She wanted to make sure the place was safe first. So what she's doing to make sure it's safe is that your kind, as she goes on to detail, made a sport out of hunting us, so I had to cut off your paws. Make sure you people would never be able to harm us again. So I think she's basically just saying she's kind of infiltrating the certain parts, like look at the VP now being taken over. Like various people are already being put under control, that by the time the humans start to react and panic, that there's already a host presence everywhere, thanks to Holoris. There's no one really in a massive area of government or administration or something that could really react because they would already be within the plan, if you know what I mean. Probably not exactly what's gonna go down or I could be really far from that, but you get the gist from the speech that Holoris gave to William in this moment. And so that is when we cut to the host in black and it does make me laugh to all the other people there probably thinking like, how did he get this? He does address it in a way saying, I know some of you fear revisiting one of our company's darkest chapters. And to those of you, I would say that the chapter must have been dark, but it was extremely profitable. So don't worry about the massacre that made public news and everything. It was a lot of money earned, so this new park, you know, it, it did make me laugh that way because obviously there were some humans and very powerful and rich humans in that room who must have been questioning how did they get away with opening another one. He says, we've created our own new world. We aren't revisiting the past. We are recreating it. Welcome to the golden age and what is being described in the bonus behind the scenes, the roaring 20s. That's somewhat celebrating itself to death. And this is really cool as well because it's like the same place they filmed the Sweetwater set as well, but like, you know, obviously their new kind of glossed over version of the 20s. Now, one thing I want to say about the promo for next episode is that we get another tease from Bernard coming out of the Sublime, so that's what we're going to be tackling next week, but also meeting that new character in this shot here. And I've got a feeling, guys, I mean, I could be wrong about this, and maybe it's really obvious to those of you who've already seen this footage, that this girl from the trailers, this new one who's seemingly got to interact with Bernard, is possibly, possibly Caleb's daughter, but grown up in like another 12... 15 years because I've got a feeling that Bernard's gonna wake up not in present day where Maeve and Caleb are walking around But maybe like another 12 plus years after that I could be wrong But it really does look like a casting of a future version of Caleb's daughter and for some reason she could be the key to saving Humanity as kind of teased in the promo for next episode as well But why would she in particular be key to saving humanity? Could it be because there was something really weird that happened after the, the little ambiguous death dream kind of thing that Caleb was going through. What if his daughter is like the first freaking host slash human hybrid? I don't know. I'm mainly saying these theories for jokes, but also inserting little brackets of what if as well. So I'd love to know your thoughts and everything, guys. How much did you enjoy it? For me personally, I'm really still enjoying the ride. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me out way more than you could know. I mean, if you don't do it, I'm going to be freaking uploaded into Rehoboam. So please, please, please help me. And yes, there is another one out there that they don't want you to know about. And it's called the YouTube algorithm. So help me conquer the YouTube Rehoboam by leaving a like, maybe subscribe as well if you want to stay up to date with these breakdowns. So hopefully I'll see you guys again next week in the next breakdown. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the comments. But until then, my fellow hosts and humans, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.